Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson, also your local technical consultant for Altium. And today we are gonna be looking at a very cool viewer question on our most recent grounding video. So our recent grounding video on types of grounds that you'll see in schematics and in data sheets and PCB layouts. There's a link to it in the description, so I'd encourage you to go watch that before diving into this video. So this particular question relates to how to get signals across the gap between a primary ground and a secondary ground when you have a system that requires galvanic isolation. So that's what we're gonna get into today. Follow along and let's get started. Started. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at that viewer question. John S. writes, Hi Zach, I just watched the types of grounding video and with the UCC component, there are sync pulses on the input power side. Why is that and how do you get those pulses to the input side if you have galvanic isolation? Would they need to cross the gap between the GNDP and GNDS regions? So in this question, I'm assuming that it is implying the sync pulses are originating from the secondary side in that system. So if the sync pulses do originate from the secondary side, then in that case, the answer is you would have to couple them across that gap between uh, the primary ground and secondary ground regions somehow with some component. So there are a few different ways that you could do that. Remember, you have to do it without uh, eliminating the DC isolation that you have between those two regions because that's the entire point of an isolated system, particularly in power electronics. When you have that isolation, you are preventing somebody who is interacting with the output side, which is the secondary side, from uh, possibly being exposed to high voltages or high currents that originate from the input side, which is the primary side. So how do you get those signals across the gap? One way is possibly with a transformer. Another way could be with AC capacitors. And then the third possible way is with an optocoupler. So an optocoupler, I would argue, is really the preferred way. Optocoupler components can maintain high DC isolation, just like you would have in those uh, like DC-DC converter modules, um, like the one that we looked at from Texas Instruments. So let's go ahead and take a look at that data sheet again, and let's find an example optocoupler that we can use and I will show you how to do that inside of Altium Designer. Okay, so I'm inside of this Texas Instruments data sheet again. This is the component that was being referenced in the question. It's UCC12040 and this is a basic isolation DC DC module. If you just zoom in here on this application circuit, here's what the question was talking about. So we have two ground nets here that are called out in this simplified application diagram. So we have a primary side ground and then we have a secondary side ground. And then in here, inside of the component, there is a transformer coupling across this barrier that then allows the input power to then transform down to the value required at the output side. The output side is essentially going to have a floating ground. It's given a different symbol here than you would use on the input side. That's how you know that they're different nets. Also, they are labeled differently. These are also the names of the pins. Now you'll notice here, there are sync pulses, and these sync pulses are used to synchronize the device with respect to a reference oscillator that's built into the component. The question is, suppose you were to originate those sync pulses over here on the secondary side of the component. Let's just suppose for a moment you did that. How do you get those sync pulses from the secondary side over to the primary side? So if we just scroll down and look at how Texas Instruments actually recommends you deal with the PCB layout in this component. So first thing that they show is that you do have a transformer driver and then a rectifier here. So there is a barrier here that is essentially open between these two coils. The component is coupling power across this gap into this secondary coil. And so you have to maintain that in the PCB layout. So now if we scroll down to the recommended PCB layout. Here you can see even on this recommended PCB layout, again this is just an evaluation model here, but um, on this recommended PCB layout you can see that they have the ground nets totally split from each other and then the component essentially bridges the gap between them and what they've done here is what I've actually recommended in another video on grounding which is to bridge these two 
with a stitching cap. This particular stitching cap has to have very high capacitance. The reason that you have a very large capacitance here is so that any high frequency noise that originates on this side can then pass through this capacitor and then get back to the primary side and then return back to the input power return. That happens here at this GNDP pin. This could be where you put maybe like a two pin header. You could also put it up here. In any case, that's where the high frequency noise that is being returned into this ground region and then across this capacitor is trying to go. So how do you get a signal across this gap? Well, you can do it with an optocoupler. So an optocoupler is a pretty simple component. It essentially uses light to couple a signal across an isolation barrier. So it doesn't require any direct copper connection between these two components. So I'm inside of Altium Designer and I'm just gonna search for optocoupler in the manufacturer part search panel. This one will probably be fine. So we'll go ahead and place this. And so looking at this symbol, I think you can already see what's supposed to happen here. So essentially on one side of this component, on the input side, what happens is you send in a signal and that signal can then turn on an LED here. You'll need a current limiting resistor depending on the voltage of the input signal. But in any case, you turn on an LED in the interior of this component. That LED then illuminates a phototransistor on this other side. So this phototransistor then turns on and that can allow power to then conduct through this phototransistor over to a load on this side of the component. So what you could do here is if you had this arranged such that the primary input power side was on the left, you could then have this say be your PGND, primary ground. You would have a different net for your secondary ground. And I'm just using the, the signal ground symbol in Altium Designer, but you can you know rename this. So SGND for secondary ground. And then you would wanna put a power source up here somewhere. Let's just go with, uh, let's say five volts. And then you would have a resistor here. So maybe like a 1K resistor, let's say. So the value of the resistor that you have to use here is gonna be for current limiting. You would wanna just look in the data sheet of this component to make sure that you're providing enough current in order to turn this on and then drive this into conduction so that power can flow through this phototransistor. So in this way, the component basically works like a switch. And so if I just place this guy, bring this up here, move these two over, I've now created my optocoupler component. And then typically what you'll do is you'll put a capacitor across here just to provide some additional decoupling here. But once you place everything like this, you're essentially turning on this LED, then illuminates this phototransistor and that allows it to conduct. And so what you would then do is you would then be sending in some signals over here, let's say. So maybe instead of having just a constant five volts, you have a voltage source up here that's uh, providing pulses. Then what it's gonna do is conduct over to here and then turn on this phototransistor. And then that is then going to pull power through it. And then you would essentially draw that off into a load somewhere else in the system. So that's how this component works. And essentially because we have now this secondary ground side and this primary ground side, this would also be bridging the gap across that separation barrier in the PCB. So we would wanna place this optocoupler, I would say maybe right here next to C5 in this layout. So right here where this text is, you could place it right here. So if you were generating those signals over here on the secondary side, you could then conduct them across this gap over here to the primary side and then just route them over here to the sync pin. If I were to use a layout like this, I would essentially rotate this around so that the GND pin is on top and then you could easily route this up here and connect it to the sync pin. That's how you would use an optocoupler in this type of application. Okay, so if you're inside of this PCB layout and you are looking for an optocoupler that you want to bridge this gap, what specifications should you look at? There are a couple of specifications that you should look for just to make sure that you're selecting the right optocoupler that you could then pair up with an isolated component like this DC-DC module. So just for fun, let's go ahead and look up this component on Octopart and let's see what we can learn from the datasheet. 
So I've got the data sheet right here. I think the first place to start is to look at two specifications. So the first specification is very simple. It's the forward voltage. So this forward voltage is the amount of voltage that you need at a specific current in order to turn on this LED. That value here for this particular component is typical of 1.25 volts. So you can use that with a desired forward current in order to determine the size of this particular resistor here. So 1K is what I just kind of grabbed out of the manufacturer part search panel. Might be a little large, but you can go ahead and calculate that yourself. And there are a lot of online calculators that you can use to do that for you. The next important specification is right here. It is the isolation test voltage, so VRMS. So you can see here it's five kilovolts RMS. Just to kind of compare here, let's Take a look at the UCC component and let's just go ahead and find the isolation rating. So you can see it's right here on the first page. So the isolation rating for this particular component is three kilovolts RMS. So this optocoupler would be just fine to use with this particular DC-DC module in order to ensure that you still maintain the same level of isolation across the gap between those two ground regions. All right, everybody. So um, I hope this gives everyone a good introduction to optocouplers couplers. They're really simple components to use, but they're also very useful, especially in systems where you need to maintain this kind of galvanic isolation. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can keep up with all of our upcoming videos. Make sure to hit that like button. If you have questions about this type of component or how to use it, make sure to drop us a line in the comment section. You can also send your question over to YouTube at altium.com, just like John did. All right. Thanks everybody. And uh, last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.